Welcome to my video on vector addition in vPython. So this is a little video to help those of you guys who got maybe a bit stuck when we went over coding vectors for the first time. So I have this little class assignment that we were doing and we're just going to run you through some of the answers in here. So what you're supposed to be doing is clicking on this link here, which will bring you to the GlowScript program that we were working with. Uh, you're gonna, it's automatically going to run it. You'll see there's a blue arrow. It's three units to the right. This is the origin, by the way. If I click, you'll go to the next arrow that's shown. This is a red arrow. That's four units up. It's also drawn from that center point, so they're concurrent vectors. Um, now, if I edit the program, you'll see um, the whole program. Do not touch the bottom part. Don't worry about that. That's just uh, basically making the grid that you see. But what you're really going to be doing is just putting your code in there. But you'll need to, because you, you don't have access to edit it, it's my program, you'll need to highlight all this, copy it, and then paste it into your own GlowScript folder, okay? So make your own program, create a new program called Vectors or whatever, and, and then start working with it. Okay, so what we need to do, if you notice when we run this program, we have two arrows that are basically concurrent and they're right uh, joined with their tails together. We wanna move, relocate this red arrow and put it over here so it's at the tip of the blue arrow, okay? So we're gonna to want to add these vectors by tip to tail method. And then secondly, we wanna actually uh, draw the resultant vector, which will be laying along the hypotenuse, making a, a triangle. All right, so let's take a look at what this is. So the first line here that you see, or this line where I have a arrow dot, whatever, let's examine that what that means. It's creating an object called an arrow. Its tail is located at the origin. That's where pause stands for position. The axis is really, defining the direction and the magnitude of it. So remember that the first number is the X, then the second number is the Y, and the third number is the Z. So this means that it points three units to the right, right? Nothing up and nothing down, or not in, into or out of the screen. So it's just a horizontal arrow that's three units. The B arrow is also positioned leaving from the origin, its tail is at the origin, but it is now going four units vertically up and nothing horizontally. So what we need to do is try to, let's start to just simply move arrow B so that its tail is located at the tip of arrow A. So hopefully you realize that if I, in order for me to do that, I need to reposition, essentially just to show you the program, I need to reposition this red arrow so that its tail is over here. All right, it's right now at zero, zero, zero. I need to move it one, two, three units. I need to really move it three units to the right and nothing vertically or along the Z axis. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna change this position vector in here. So we're gonna um, change that and you'll see that really we needed to move it three units to the right. Okay, so if I right click run the program now, you're gonna see that now the red arrow is attached to the right spot. Okay, so that's the first part. Okay, and we'll, I'm gonna talk about how we can update it a little bit better afterwards, but let me just continue on and, and now create a resultant vector. So the resultant vector is arrow, right? Uh, position, we're gonna have it start at the origin. Um, axis equals vec. And now, uh, what we need to do is we need to find where that resultant arrow is gonna go. Let me just, uh, for now, maybe comment this out so you can see where what I'm talking about. I need to create, all right, a green arrow that's gonna go right along there. Let's make it green so it's just a different color. So hopefully you can see that's gonna be three units to the right, four units up. It's gonna be really, this is a three, four, five triangle, but we're gonna try to draw that in. Well, it's gotta go, the tip of it has to go three to the right and four up, right? So if I go over here, I need to change We've got the tail of it at zero, 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 but we need to change that axis vector. So really what you're doing is adding vectors, right? You're, you're, you're looking at the X coordinates and you have, it's going three plus zero, which is just three, uh, zero plus four, which is four, and along the Z is just zero, because zero plus zero is zero. So we are gonna make color equals color dot green, and the shaft width is 0.2. So let's see if this produces the right vector in here, all right, that we wanna see. Okay, there's the first, second vector, and now the resultant. Good, great stuff. Now, being a good programmer, what we wanna do is make it such that it will always work. So if I change, say, line, you know, this line over here, and say, well, let's say this was now five units to the right, will it still work, right? 
Well, if I do that, oh no, it doesn't because now it's not putting the red arrow to the right place and it's not, it's based on the old values, right? So really what you would like to do is just make, if you make a change at the beginning, you want it to trickle through and not have to change all the other numbers in the next subsequent lines. So in B object, the arrow, what we look at is if you can see that the position of it would have to be changed to five, right, for it to work. But I don't want to do that every time, right? I want to actually be it, have it so that it actually always, always works, right? So if you're looking at this carefully, I really can just replace this whole position, right, with always being at the tip of arrow A, right? So its position or the tail of arrow B needs to be located, if you look at it, really at 5, 0, 0. So really it's the axis attribute of that. So really what we're going to do is we're going to make it equal to A, arrow A's axis attribute. Now some people might say, well, there's an X, there's a Y, and a Z, but if you just set it to A dot axis, it's going to set up to that entire vector quantity. So it's going to set the position vector equal to a vector that is 5, 0, 0 in this case. So if I run this now, all right, you can see that the red arrow is in the right spot but the green arrow is not in the right spot. So how do we fix that? Hmm. So if you noticed here, we were actually, if you were looking at this carefully, we're doing vector addition. And when you add vectors by components, right, you just simply add the x's come together, five plus zero, that's five, really. That should be a five now, right? And then zero plus four is four. And so if I run it now, well, sure, it's gonna work properly because now I've got the result in the right spot, but Again, being a good programmer, I really don't want to always keep updating lines later on. So I probably should erase that, right, and make it such that it is automatically calculated, embedded within that code. So resultant is really the sum of two vectors. So what we're doing is really adding the 5 plus 0, the 0 plus 4, and the 0 plus 0. So really, you can create a resultant built into it. So really, you have to take object A, its axes, and now I could add the x's, add the y's, add the z separately, that would be really cumbersome, but you can actually just go, well then add b dot axes, and it does all three components together. So really when I'm adding, it's adding really along the x's, along the y's, and along the z's, and it's actually making it into a vector quantity. So now when I run the program, right, it's going to hopefully automatically give you the green arrow. So if I change this around to anything I want, like let's say I change the first vector to be say three, then four, and then this one is gonna be say negative one and three or something. And now when I run the program, no matter what I type in as vectors, it's always gonna produce the right answer, right? So that's a better way to program it, right? So that you don't always have to keep changing the numbers as you go through it, have it already embedded within the code. Okay, so let's go back to that assignment and see what else we have to do. So we did really drew the result in vector and it works at all times. We have now have the vectors adding tip to tail method or head to tail. And now we're placing the result in vector as on the result inside of the triangle. So we're now gonna look at printing the length of the result in vector. Okay, so we're gonna add a print statement. Print, open it, quotes. We'll be putting some text in the resultant vector as a length, close quotes, and then we're going to put something in here. Now there's a lot of ways of doing this. I'm gonna just show you, um, first of all, what maybe the way we do it normally in class, right? If you're thinking of it, uh, when we run this program, we, would, we have a triangle that's, you know, A squared plus B squared, and if you want the hypotenuse, then we use C squared, right? So you're gonna use Pythagorean theorem for this, right? So if you wanna find the result inside, we're going to use the square root, right, of something in there, right? Well, what are we taking the square root of? Well, we're taking, it's like kind of the distance form. That's exactly what it is, right? So we have to take the resultant of the x components, which would be in this case, say, well, let's go back and make it easy. So, so let's say this is 3, then 0, 0, 0. And let's say this is back to our original problem, just because it's a little bit easier to visualize, right? So we know it's supposed to be 5, right? It's 3 squared plus 4 squared, right? The square root of that is supposed to be 5, right? Uh, but I want it to always write, work. So I'm going to do um, the resultant vector dot axes dot x. That would be the three, right? It's three plus zero. Then I'm gonna square that, all right? A square is not that way, by the way. In Python, you have to do star star, that's raising it to the power two. 
Then we're going to take r dot axes dot y star star two, and you could also do r dot axes dot z. Don't doesn't really matter because we're not really doing anything along the z axis. But if you did, this is more I guess appropriate. All right. So then if I run this program, hopefully I have not made any mistakes. Let's see here. Um, it should hopefully output the length of five. There you go. You can see down here, the length of the vector is five units. Okay, now some of my more keen students in class said, well, is there probably some like operation built into GlowScript? And you are right. If you look in here and you type in GlowScript, just Google, Google, sorry, um, you know, vector operations in, in, in GlowScript, you'll get to a help web page here. And you can see down in here, uh, you can uh, use a function called mag. Right? So mag a or a dot mag, and that will literally get you the magnitude of that vector. So you're taking the magnitude of the axis vector, by the way. So in retrospect, if you want to kind of reduce your typing in here, you can get rid of all of this square root stuff, and you could just say, well, I'm going to take the magnitude of my results and vector. Now, if you just write it like that, that's not going to work. Why? Because that's an object and it has many different vector attributes. So you really have to say, well, what am I taking the magnitude of? I'm taking the magnitude of not the position vector, I'm taking the magnitude of the axis vector. So magnitude of object R and the attribute axis, right? So now if I run it, it should be actually taking the magnitude of that particular attribute vector. There you go, okay? I've had some people say, well, you could do it a slightly different way. You could also do r.axis.mag. That should also work, I believe. Let me just double check that. All right, yep, that works. And I even learned something the other day. One of my students showed me that you could do r dot length, which actually will uh, look for the length of that arrow for you, right? And so that works as well. Okay, so lots of different ways. Of course, I want you to know in terms of our solving and testing quizzes, Pythagorean theorem, because that's what you're going to be doing, right? On tests and quizzes and so forth, right? Unless you're doing coding. All right, we need to have another print statement. So if we go back to the other uh, assignment here, we can see that we're supposed to find the angle that the resultant makes, right? So let's go back to that. We're going to add in here uh, the angle the resultant vector makes um, with respect to horizontal, or let's say just positive x axes is, and now we can put something in there, right? So if you recall, by the way, um, let me just maybe move this over here, yeah? If you recall in your triangles, right? Right, we want to find this angle beta, right? And what we need to use is we need to know the y component, the x component, so we're going to be using tan theta equals y over x, right? Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that with the camera. Maybe you can, I don't know. Looks kind of light, actually. Anyway, let's do it. So, but we want to find the angle. So, to find the angle, we're going to use theta equals tan inverse of y over x, right? So that function is called a tan, arc tan. So in GlowScript, we're going to use a tan, and we're taking well the y component of r dot axis dot y divided by r dot axis dot x, right? So you're doing the y component over the x component, and we'll run that. OK. Now, you might notice something. I get 0.492729. That's not in degrees. That's in radians. And I don't really think in radians. So computers work in radians, by the way, right? Most. So if you want to put this into degrees, like let's say put a comma in here and say degrees, right? Then we need to change this in here, right? We need to multiply by what? Remember in angles we have the pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So if we want to convert from radians to degrees, we're going to multiply by 180 degrees and divide by pi. You'll see it turns uh, blue when I type in pi. It means it's already built into it. And so if, now if I run the program, all right, you should see I get, oh, now it's in degrees. Good. All right. Now, uh, some of you might say, well, is there another way? Like if I go back to that GlowScript help page, is there a way to convert radians to degrees? And yes, there is. Um, you got to, uh, can't quite see it because my page is, this is a bit cut off here, but it's down in the bottom here. 
you can't quite see it, but there is a way, and it's, it's basically degrees, all right? So what you're gonna do is go to our program in here, uh, and we're just going to, instead of doing it this way, you can also write degrees around the whole expression that you've got. And that should work as well. All right, so we have, uh, uh, and there, you got that, that works too. Okay, so uh, I've done all the necessary things that you need to do, all right? Um, hopefully you can see that when we add two vectors, we add up all the X components, we add up all the Y components, we add up all the Z components, and you really then, if you wanna get the result, then you reassemble them back together. All right, to go a little bit further, um, I'm not gonna do that right now, because this video is already long. I'd like you to try to make four vectors, vector A with X, Y, Z, and B as well, and then vector C and vector D, and I want you to show four vectors being added by tip to tail method. Wouldn't that be cool? Try that on your own and show it to me in class. All right, hopefully this was helpful to you.